Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is episode 4 of my bookshelf tour series. So if you don't know, I have been doing a series of bookshelf tour videos on my channel where I go over each different section of my bookshelves and today is dedicated to my children's classics section. It is just one very small part of my bookshelves right here. And I am just going to be going over the books that I have on there. It's one of my favorite sections because I find so much comfort and love in children's classics. This is the start of my classics collection overall on my bookshelves, and I'm just so excited to start talking about classics. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to be showing you all of my children's classics and talking to you about which ones I love, which ones I haven't read yet, and hopefully you will find some inspiration and maybe some favorites of your own or some new reads that you might want to add to your TBR. So let's start talking about children's classics. Okay, so this is what my shelf looks like overall. We are just going to be going over this one shelf in its entirety. The first thing on my bookshelf is this little wreath, and I love it. My mom actually got one for me and my sister, and I keep mine on my bookshelf. So beautiful. I love how you can do that with branches. I think it's amazing. Anyway, so that's the little decoration I have. And then I will get a little bit closer and show you all of the books and go through them. Starting from the left and going to the right, the first book on the left I have is this beautiful, beautiful book. It is The Art of Winnie the Pooh, How Each Shepherd Illustrated an Icon. And this is all about the illustrator of Winnie the Pooh and his partnership with A.A. A. Milne, the writer of Winnie the Pooh. It is a stunning, stunning edition. Inside we have different sketches and photographs. The beginning starts with E.H. Shepard's life, his early career, as well as his partnership with A.A. A. Milne. They were both working for a magazine called Punch, and then that turned into working together on Winnie the Pooh. We see different ideas that he had, rough sketches, the different stages that his illustrations went through, which I think as an illustrator myself I learn so much from and I think is beautiful to see because it's great to see how a creative mind works and his ideas and how one idea led to another and this is just a fantastic book, beautifully created and the illustrations are my very favorite part as well as learning more about him because he's one of my very favorite illustrators. So adore this. The next book I have is my very first copy of Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables is my one of my very favorite books and this edition I got at Barnes and Noble. It has gold edges and it is just so so stunning. It says, I don't know what lies around the bend, but I'm going to believe that the best does. I love Anne. She's she's so wonderful. Inside it has these beautiful end papers and it also has some original illustrations. It says, Plate one, there's something so stylish about you, Anne, said Diana. Oh, here it is. One of my very favorite scenes. <laughs> I won't spoil it or anything, but we all know. We all know what's going on here. If you have read Anne, you know what's going on. Um, <laughs> one of the best scenes in the whole book, and I just absolutely adore the Anne of Green Gables series. So this is the book that I actually first read it from. So then after absolutely falling in love with it, I got the whole box set, which you can see right here. And then we also have more Ellen Montgomery books on top, but I will get to those in a minute. Um, the next book I have is Ballet Shoes by Noel Stretfield. And I wanted to read this book because of a movie. One of my favorite films is You've Got Mail with Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks and that is a movie about a woman who owns a children's bookstore and one of her favorite books closer to the end of the movie she talks about Ballet Shoes by Noel Stretfield and I always wanted to read it after watching that scene and I did and it is such a charming classic. This edition is also incredibly beautiful. It's a nice canvas material which I love so much you can see I did annotate a bit of it. The back says, Three orphan girls, a pair of pink slippers, a lifetime in the spotlight. A classic that has captivated generations. And this is about three girls who have very different experiences 
with ballet and if you don't know I am very passionate about the ballet. I did dance ballet when I was younger and I just I love attending the ballet, going to see different ballets and so we if we have a children's classic about ballet I will 100% read it and love it. This is such a charming classic and this actually is one of many in a series. I would look forward to reading more in the series either the theater shoes or skating shoes. I just love that cover too. Those illustrations are adorable. The next book I have is a longtime favorite and that is Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers. I grew up watching and adoring the Julie Andrews Mary Poppins, of course, and we have the new Mary Poppins Returns with Emily Blunt, which I also loved, and it of course was inspired by P.L. Travers' original story of Mary Poppins. I actually read this book a few years ago. I didn't grow up reading the book, I actually grew up watching the original Julie Andrews film. You have to read Mary Poppins or you have to watch it if you haven't watched it. And the illustrations are just so charming. Um, one of my very favorite books. You can't beat Mary Poppins. I don't know what else to say about it. It is just brilliant and if you haven't seen Saving Mr. Banks, which is with Emma Thompson and Tom Hanks, Oh my gosh, it is the story of P.L. Travers and Walt Disney. It's wonderful, really heartbreaking, made me sob, and made me really look at the story of Mary Poppins very differently, but a wonderful book. The next book I have is Charlotte's Web by the wonderful E.B. White, and this has pictures by Garth Williams. A fun fact about E.B. White is he actually had a house all the way at the end of Long Island in Montauk, and every year when we would travel out to out east to go to Montauk, I would always look for E.B. White's white mailbox, which had his name on it, and I always pictured myself living in E.B. White's house as a writer myself when I was younger, uh, and I still do. I still have that dream. Um, <laughs> so I love E.B. White. He is one of my favorite writers just growing up. I loved Charlotte's Web. I also loved Stuart Little. I also love the movie adaptation with Dakota Fanning. So wonderful. Again, amazing illustrations. I think that's a big reason why I love children's classics and children's books is because of the illustrations. So sweet. And even though I am petrified of spiders, every time I look at a spider, I try to remind myself of Charlotte and, and her web and to not hate spiders, but I'm just terrified of them. I can't help it. <laughs> the next book I have is new to my collection and that is Roald Dahl's Fantastic Mr. Fox. I recently picked this up at my library's Use bookshop and I love the Wes Anderson film, the stop-motion animation of Fantastic Mr. Fox. Um, this also of course has illustrations by Quentin Blake and I love the film but I've never read the book and I greatly look forward to reading the book. Matilda by Roald Dahl was actually my first read of 2022 and I loved it. That was my first time actually reading Matilda because I grew up watching the movie of course um, which is the case for a lot of books for me I guess um, and I greatly look forward to continuing on with more Roald Dahl books. The next one I have is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory of course. I actually have never read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but you guessed it, I grew up watching the movie. Um, <laughs> so I need to actually read the original story. And then the next Roald Dahl I have is The BFG, which again, you guessed it, I didn't grow up watching the movie, but there is a newer adaptation and I watched that when that came out a few years ago and loved it and I need to actually read the original story. The next book I have is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. I have actually only read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I know there is a full series. I know that it the, the order to read them in is a bit different to, I think, publication order and chronology is different. Um, but I have just read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It is one of my very favorite books. I love reading it in the winter time, and this is actually a full-color collector's edition. The story of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Again, I love the film. I grew up watching the film, and I read the story later on. There's so much that this book has to say about sibling relationships and good and evil and it's just brilliant. 
Oh, look at that. So good. So good. One of my very favorites. The next book I have is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lengel, and this is one of the first books that got me into reading children's classics, and it's wonderful. This is also the first in a series, but I haven't continued on with the series. I loved A Wrinkle in Time. I also watched the recent movie adaptation, and I liked it, but I didn't love it. I think I definitely prefer the book. I would consider maybe listening to the rest on audiobook. I don't know if... I feel like I just need to maybe get back into them or do a reread of A Wrinkle in Time and continue with the series. I'm not too sure, but this is a wonderful story. It has a beautiful message of, again, good and evil and family and friendship and a lot of common themes that are found in children's classics, but the way that the magic system works and it's like semi-sci-fi fantasy, magical realism. It's just a mix of so many different things and it's a wonderful read. The next book I have I actually got from one of my wonderful friends who also watches my videos and she not only gifted me one of her editions of The Children of Green No by Lucy M. Boston, but she also made me this wonderful bookmark which she put inside of it. This is one of her gorgeous vintage copies of it. It's even taped, like the spine is really battered and it's taped and I just love that. I love when books look like they're really well loved and well read and I read this book last Christmas. It's a wonderful story. I will show you the back and read it to you. So it says, Tolly has expected to be the only child in his grandmother's old house, but time meant nothing at Green No, least of all to the children who had been so happy there centuries before. Very imaginative, it has a lot of magical realism aspects to it, and I believe it's based off of a real house. The next three books I actually got in my P.O. box from a viewer and these are the wonderful Ladybird editions and I actually never heard of Ladybird publishing until these were sent to me last year and they're wonderful books meant to be slightly educational for kids and it's a really approach approachable way to talk about different parts of like the history of London and the story of Henry V and Madame Curie. So I think it's a wonderful way to educate kids in an exciting way with beautiful illustrations. And it's just a very classic publishing company, which I really loved learning more about after I found out about them. So very happy to have these. And thank you so much if you're watching this um, for gifting them to me. They are such beautiful books. Then the book on top of my little stack right here, the first one is Enid Blyton's Nature Stories. I actually just recently got this copy for Christmas from my beautiful friend Mary. These are 30 stories, 30 nature stories from Enid Blyton. I've actually never read any Enid Blyton before, but I know so many people love her books, and I thought starting with her stories might be a good place to begin with her because I love nature. I love children's classics, and this just seemed like a wonderful place to start. It's also a beautiful copy. Explore the great outdoors with the world's best love storyteller. Meet the crab looking for a new shell and the bat who befriends a dormouse. Travel from forest to riverbank, back garden to beach, in this wonderful collection of stories that celebrate the natural world around us. That just seems like everything that I would love, and I can't wait to read it. So now this is my stack of Ella Montgomery books. The one on top is The Blue Castle. I love these editions. They're like the adorable vintage looking mass market paperbacks. I think they're so sweet. And this is a standalone, I believe it's in the adult novel, one of her adult novels. I don't honestly remember what it's about. Oh yes, it is adult because the main character is 29. At 29, Valancey had never been in love and it seemed romance had passed her by. Living with her overbearing mother and meddlesome aunt, she found her only consolation in the forbidden books of John Forster and her daydreams of the Blue Castle. Then a letter arrives from Dr. Trent and Valancey decided to throw caution to the winds. 
For the first time in her life, Valancy did and said exactly what she wanted. Soon she discovered a surprising new world full of love and adventures far beyond her most secret dreams. That just sounds absolutely wonderful, and this was sent to me from a viewer and a friend, and she actually picked out this book for me and I am so thankful. I also have another edition of it right here which was given to me by my friend Mary. So very excited to read this book especially because I have two stunning editions of it and I know that I love Ellen Montgomery's writing. She writes about characters and nature and relationships in a way that is so unique and so singular to her and I feel like when you read a book by Ellen Montgomery, you know that it's an Ellen Montgomery book. I love her writing, I love her books, I know I'm going to love The Blue Castle, and I just can't wait to read it. Then the next books are the Emily of New Moon series. So the first book is the only one that I have read so far, which again, I just love these vintage looking covers. You can see I did adore it. I have so many annotations and favorite parts that I wanted to tab. And then I believe it goes to Emily's Quest is the second book. So here we have Emily's Quest. And then I believe the third and final book in the Emily of New Moon series is Emily Climbs. Which again, just love these colors. Love the color schemes. Love how they have that adorable portrait from the cover on the spine. I think they just look so wonderful all stacked up together because here we have all of Anne and I'm very excited to keep reading the Emily of New Moon series because I really did enjoy the first book. Then we have my beloved Anne of Green Gables box set. I have such a special place in my heart for this whole series and for this box set in general. I bought this box set when I was working at Barnes & Noble. I went in to work one day and on my lunch break I went and I bought it and I was just so excited. I remember that like it was yesterday, just the excitement of getting the whole series of Anne. Um, so we have Anne of Green Gables. You can see this spine isn't cracked because I originally read it from this edition. And then all of these you can see that the spines are cracked, which I just love because these are so well loved. And they're thoroughly annotated. Oh my gosh. I went nuts with the annotations. You can see I have a <laughs> I have so, oh my gosh, yeah, just a ridiculous amount of annotations. Um, you should see, I think it's Anne of the Island, or is it Anne of Avonlea? I covered one of the pages in hearts. <laughs> oh god. I can't explain to you how much Anne of Green Gables means to me. The whole series is just incredible. So the first book is, of course, Anne of Green Gables. And then we have Anne of Avonlea, which is, I think, maybe my second favorite, or third favorite. Ooh, I don't know. Anne of the Island, I think, is my favorite. I think. I think Anne of the Island is my favorite. Um, let's see, is it this one? Yeah, look at all of these uh, annotations. Oh, oh, and I remember I was doing little, I did little drawings in them. Because I think this scene was about birch trees, or just trees in general, so I wanted to do a little illustration of trees. If I had more time, I would do more illustrations in the margins, but when I'm reading, I just, I want to focus on the book, but yeah, here are my little hearts. One of the pages I covered, oh, here it is. I don't want to spoil it or anything, so I'm just going to show you really quickly, but hearts everywhere. <laughs> Look at all those, so many hearts. <laughs> One of my very favorite pages, as you can tell. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I feel like Anne of the Island might be my number one favorite, then Anne of Green Gables, then Anne of Avonlea, then all of the other ones I love equally. Um, but it's what I love about Anne of Green Gables is you get to see Anne grow up. We have Anne when she's a young orphan without a family, and then at the end, it's Rilla of Ingleside. Rilla is her daughter. And we get to see Anne as, as a mother and just, I just felt like when I was reading this book series, because I read them back to back, it really felt like I was growing up with Anne. And, oh my god, I can't, I just can't explain how much I love these books. So the next one is Anne of Windy Poplars. Then we have Anne's House of Dreams. Then I have Anne of Ingleside, which you can see she's a mom now. Oh, 
god, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and then the seventh book is Rainbow Valley, which is mainly about her kids and her as a mom. Oh my gosh. And then we have Rilla of Ingleside. The mood and atmosphere of Rilla of Ingleside is very different to the atmosphere of the other books in the series. This is about mainly Rilla, who is Anne's daughter, one of Anne's children. She has many. Rilla is her youngest and it has part historical fiction aspects to it because it does talk a lot about the war that's going on at the time and you can tell on the cover it's quite a narrative illustration you can kind of guess at what's happening but it's really heartfelt and i was so surprised by the historical aspects combining aspects of war to what i loved so much about just regular Ellen Montgomery. It's it's a wonderful book and a wonderful ending to the series. I remember sobbing my eyes out when I finished the series. I finished it in about a month or a little more than a month. I just read them back to back to back and loved every second of doing that and I really want to reread them so badly. Just if you get anything out of this video, please read Anne of Green Gables. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> also, how adorable is this box set? It's just so cute. The next book I have is from the Beautiful Puffin in Bloom collection, and this is Heidi by Johanna Spirey. This was also given to me by my wonderful friend Mary. You can tell her and I have a great love for children's classics. Can we just take a minute to talk about how beautiful this edition is? This is from the creator of Rifle Paper Company, Anna Bond. Again, like so many of these books, I grew up watching the movie, but I have never read the book before, and I really want to read Heidi very, very soon. Um, I grew up watching the Shirley Temple movie adaptation of Heidi, and it was one of my very favorite ones to watch when I was younger. When I couldn't sleep at night and I had a nightmare, I would always... Uh, wake up my parents and they would take me downstairs and they would either put on Winnie the Pooh, Barney, Shirley Temple's Heidi, or Mary Poppins, or one of my favorite books from when I was, uh, one of my favorite movies from when I was a kid, and Heidi was one of them. So I really want to read the book. I don't know why I haven't yet. I really wanted to read it this winter. Um, so maybe I will squeeze it in before spring starts. The next book is one of my all-time favorites. Gosh, I love it so much. And that is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Again, in the beautiful Puffin in Bloom edition. I mean, how can you... How can you not adore? Like, what? How can a book be so beautiful? Oh my goodness. A good thing to know about Little Women is that it does come in different editions where it might only have the first volume. So the first volume is titled Little Women and then the second volume is titled Good Wives. This edition has both, which is why it is so chunky, but also the pages, the text is quite large and the margins are quite big. Um, but you can see <laughs> I annotated like crazy in this edition. How beautiful are those end papers as well? Oh my goodness. And Little Women is one of my very favorite books. I, I love the, the 90s adaptation. I also love the new adaptation from Greta Gerwig. But the book, oh, it's, I know it's very hit or miss for a lot of people. What I love is it is just such a beautiful representation of being a young woman. The history that is captured, Louisa May Alcott's writing, the story itself, just everything about Little Women, I adore so much, and I'm definitely due for a reread. I would love to reread this book at some point in 2022, so we'll see if that happens, but another absolute favorite. I have about a billion editions of this book, which you will see right now, because my next one is another copy of Little Women. Um, so this one I was gifted from my best friends Anna and Brian, and how gorgeous is this edition? It is from a publisher called Chiltern. They have a bunch of beautiful editions. They're all different floral patterns for each edition. I know they have one for Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, a bunch of different classics, and they're also embossed as well, which I don't know if you can really tell. And would love to get more from Chiltern because they are just absolutely stunning. Then the next book I have... <laughs> is another copy of Little Women. <laughs> Did we all see this coming? 
Yes, this is from the Sisterhood collection, I believe. Yes, the Sisterhood collection from Penguin. This cover illustration, I don't want to mispronounce her name, so I will just show it to you guys, but I follow her on Instagram, and her illustrations are absolutely stunning. So she did this Sisterhood collection with Penguin. There's one for the Little Princess, Pride and Prejudice, Anne of Green Gables, Little Women, of course. What does it say? Here we go. Heidi, Pride and Prejudice, the Rail Railway Children. I was going to say the Railway Children. <laughs> uh, Anne of Green Gables, you can see. A Little Princess. Yeah, so wonderful. And then I do think that this only has Little Women, the first volume. I don't believe it's the full story with Good Wives as well. So I highly recommend reading both. So maybe getting yourself a bigger edition like the Puffin in Bloom, which has both volumes. And when I saw this edition, I just needed to get it. The back has a quote and it says, And the love of power woke up all of a sudden and took possession of her. And that is, of course, a quote about our main March sister Joe, although it does follow very closely with all four March sisters. As you can tell, I love Little Women. Please read Little Women if you haven't, or watch one of the adaptations. Um, do both. Watch an adaptation and read the book, because you can't go wrong with doing that. So if you get anything out of this video, Anne of Green Gables, Little Women, and the next book, and the last book, which is one of my very favorite books of all time. This is a special edition that I was gifted from my best friend Emma. This is just one of the most beautiful books I own. This is actually from Pan Macmillan, which does these beautiful Macmillan Collector's Library editions, which you guys know I adore so much. Beautiful, beautiful editions. This is just a bigger version of it. This was for one of the anniversaries, I believe, of... The Little Prince. So it has this beautiful slipcase which has a quote on the back and these stars which if you don't know the stars on my wrist are actually inspired by the stars from The Little Prince. On the back it has this beautiful quote and it says after crash landing in the Sahara Desert a pilot encounters a little prince who is visiting Earth from his own planet. Their strange and moving meeting illuminates for the aviator many of life's universal truths as he comes to learn what it means to be human from a child who is not. And with original color illustrations. Make anything gold leaf and I am sold. I am, I am a fan. <laughs> so then we have the actual book, which is, oh my gosh, breathtaking. So this is what all of the books look like from the Pan Macmillan Collector's Library edition though it doesn't come with a dust jacket. So for example, this is my edition of Jane Eyre from the original Macmillan Collector's Library edition, but when you open it, you can see that it does have the same embossed pattern on it with the leaves and the acorns. So beautiful, so that's really what they're known for. And their M, of course, for Macmillan. But with this edition, it doesn't have a dust jacket, it just has that print. So beautiful. And it just is a larger version. So instead of their iconic, again, it's the same pattern that's on the cover, the leaves and the acorns, we have the beautiful end papers that are the original illustrations from The Little Prince, which again, stars everywhere. I, I love my star tattoo, um, and it just makes me, it makes me so happy to see them on the end papers. One of my favorite books ever, um, as you can tell, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't get it, you know, tattooed on my wrist. <laughs> it's a beautiful book about humanity and learning about life and love and what is essential and what we should put our time into and the people that we care for and... The beauty of the time that we have on earth and the systems that humans have created that kind of doesn't make sense to the little prince who is not from planet earth and then with him not really understanding these aspects of earth it makes you question why things are the way that they are and it is just incredibly moving incredibly heartfelt uh makes me cry every time i read it and it's just one of my all-time favorite books, absolutely, ever, ever, ever. It is a book that I try to reread every year because 
I just get something new out of it every time I read it and I can't recommend I can't recommend it enough. It is just a book that I think everyone, absolutely everyone, should read at some point in their lives because there's so much that you can get out of it and it's one of those books that I feel like is so healing. You read it and you feel part of you is healed. Adore it. So glad that we're ending with The Little Prince. Three books to get out of this video. The first one, Anne of Green Gables. The second one, Little Women. The third one, the Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. But also all of these books. I love all of these books so much, which is exactly why I have them on my shelves, because if I didn't love them, or if I wasn't excited to read them, I wouldn't have them on my shelves. So there we have my entire children's classics collection. I hope you have enjoyed seeing all of the books that I have on my shelf. I can't wait to keep growing this collection, reading the books that I'm very eager to read, the ones I haven't read yet, and also just finding more wonderful children's classics. So if you could do me the largest favor in the comments, recommend me your favorite children's classics, the ones that you think I should read, and the ones that you love, I would adore that because you would help me grow my collection um, by recommending me some books that I should get my hands on and that I should read. I would love that. So I give you my recommendations, so I would love to hear what you recommend. Okay, and there we have it. That was my entire collection of children's classics. I hope you guys like seeing which children's classics I have on my shelves, which ones are my very favorites, which ones I have multiple copies of, which ones I recommend, and which ones I have yet to read and I am so excited to read. I hope to read many of them very, very soon. And I have loved going through my bookshelves with you in this series. I do have a whole playlist if you missed out on any of the previous episodes. I will link the playlist in the cards and down below. So definitely take a look at uh, the different sections of my bookshelves if you're interested. And thank you just so much for watching, for being so wonderful, such a great community of people. Um, please recommend me any of your favorite children's classics. I would love to know children's classics are some of my very favorite types of classics and they're the ones that really got me into reading classics because I found them the most approachable. But anyway, I look forward to episode 5 where I am going to be going over all of my plays and specifically my Shakespeare plays which I can't wait for because I'm the biggest Shakespeare nerd. So anyway, I look forward to episode 5. I look forward to seeing you in another video very, very soon. I hope you're staying well and safe and happy and reading some amazing books. I will see you soon in another video and happy reading.